So in my last video that featured a wheel horse riding lawnmower, I'd mentioned that my father had recently passed away and I am now clearing out his small engine shop. We gotta, and first we gotta sell out the property. So I'm uh, saving what I can. And this garden tractor here, I believe it's a 300 series something or another, does have, one side has hydraulic um, ports, not on the other. But anyways, for as long as I can remember, this tractor has been here sitting just like this. It was actually more piles were over the top of it. I've been clearing out walkways to get to it. As long as I can remember, this tractor has been sitting here just like this. I don't think my dad ever mentioned why it was originally taken apart. I don't know. I don't think this engine belongs to this tractor. Maybe it does. I think it's supposed to have a twin. I'm not sure. This newspaper is dated 1996. So I can maybe give you some of an idea on this. This truck has been sitting here for a while. I don't know why the back tires are pulled off. Um, I see the front axle has been pulled, which it's right there. The front tires are missing wheel bearings, but I see he's got a package of new wheel bearings here. So I'm guessing that's what it's for. Not all of these parts sitting on this tractor belong to this tractor. So it's going to be a bit of a mystery figuring out what is going on. I notice it has a, a gas tank added in that vicinity, it's usually they're back here, but it looks like there's been a cover put over, or welded over and painted over where the gas cap usually is. So maybe this was modified at one point in time. I don't know, it's gonna be a mystery. I really wanna try to complete it and get it actually running and driving. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been digging it out. I've actually got walkways around it now. So I'm gonna take a stab at putting this thing together and making it into something. I think I have some more confirmation on how long this thing's been sitting here. Uh, the, uh, I suppose you'd call that the oil pan was wrapped up under the seat in this newspaper, which was also dated 1996. I got it cleaned out to the point where I can get to the identification tag. Turns out I was way off about the series I thought it was. It's actually a 140, not a 300. So it'd be a T058 H1 because has one hydraulic hookup, probably a 12 horse Kohler, which is probably what that is. And it's right around 1968, I think to 74, which uh, makes sense on why there is a 140 hood up in the attic. So that would belong to this tractor. Fourteen horse Kohler. Well, my old man had a complete 14 horse Kohler out in his motor shed, and that's where he kept the usually good or minimal work, minimal engines that needed work, uh, stored. I noticed the shrouding is a little bit different. I don't know if this was maybe out of a 200 series, but uh, I think I'll have to change the flywheel to work with the PTO output -y shafty thingy but uh i'm gonna try to uh see if this thing will go on that uh, 140. it does turn over uh by hand and it does have compression so i think we have a healthy engine on our hands i just got done installing the original flywheel on the new engine old flywheels there and it did have one magnet that came off, which I guess is a common problem for these flywheels. I also had to move over the charging system because the uh, new charging system wasn't compatible with the old flywheel. So now I can install the uh, output shaft thingy. Exciting times. Got an engine mounted, drive shaft connected, and a battery hooked up. Give her a little, little juice. See if she pops. Oh, come on. Ah, look at that. <laughs> we are on to something.
I made a bit of an oopsie and had to take a step backwards. There's the engine. Uh, when I went to mount the front PTO, the bolt hole pattern was drilled differently. So I drilled new holes and I was following the depth of these holes, but yet this one still broke through, even though I was copying the depth of these. And once you know it, the damn drill bit broke off on me inside the engine. And there's some of the metal shavings from the drill bit. So had to drop the oil pan and uh, I'm gonna clean out the best I can, give that a good hose down uh, with compressed air and make sure there's no metal shavings left. And then I get to put the engine back in again. Well, the whole oil pan metal shaving fiasco is all buttoned up and cleaned. Ended up putting the original cast iron oil pan on instead of the aluminum one. Uh, I got the PTO clutch on. That looks to be working when I give it 12 volts, it engages. I think we're good there. And I did have to change out the carburetor because the choke lever was different. And then the governor um, is different too, where the throttle cable connects. So I had to change that out and hopefully I can put the engine back in and have it compatible and working. So I've got the muffler all mounted up, starting to come together and I had to make a block off plate because of the air cleaner housing that I'm using. It's not using the, uh, the blow in doohickey that the uh, other John Deere's use. Um, it's just a round air filter. It'll make more sense when it's assembled. So this engine came off a tractor that used an air filter assembly like this where it has some ducting to get some air blown into it. Um, but since I'm using the 140 air filter, I needed to block off that hole so that way all the air can go to cooling the engine uh, rather than just blowing out. I'm going to go ahead and do something about this broken tail light. Found an original matching one. Nice. Well, here she is, just got it done. And it turned out I was wrong about the year. It's not a 68, it's a 70. That is why it now has a black grill. And uh, I went from not even recognizing what a 140 was to uh, really falling in love with this little tractor. It's kind of cool and it turns out there's a bit of a cult following for them and I can understand why. Should we uh, go for a ride? Love that grill on the front end. It's kind of got that uh, classic muscle car look in a lawnmower. Oh, and it's got the independent brakes for really tight steering. Uh, hydro deck, let's just go ahead and start it. All right, so I might have to raise the deck up a little bit. Got pretty close to the ground. Anyways, runs like a champ. Love it. So I think that's it for this one. And uh, well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.